Bowers game. Hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review. And today I'm very excited to check out Wildlife Safari from Eagle Griffin Games. This is for two to five players, ages seven plus. It'll take about 20 to 30 minutes to play. And Wildlife Safari is a Dr. Reiner Nitzia game in which you are going to be collecting animals. Yes, real animals. Well, not real animals, but real plastic toy animals. And then laying down cards to try and manipulate how many points those animals are going to be at the end of the round. It's incredibly simple, but is it good? Let's open it up and I'll tell you about it. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Wildlife Safari. So first and foremost, we got our handy dandy rule sheet. It is a uh, one page, very small, double sided, and it should have you up and running in no time at all. It's also an incredibly simple game, so I can teach you how to play right now. So, in Wildlife Safari, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to get the most points by collecting these animals right here. And yes, these are plastic, decently sized animals, the kind that you'd find in a children's room just to play with. Also, the game is going to come with cards. The cards are where the game really gets its gusto, because you're going to have cards numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Suits will be rhinoceros, elephant, lion, leopard, and zebra, I think is the last one we're missing. You are going to deal these cards out evenly to all players, depending on how many players there are. You'll have different amounts of cards. And then on your turn, it's very simple. You are going to play out one card. And you'll generally have five piles here for all five of the different animals. And so on your turn, you might decide to play this one rhinoceros right here. And then you can take any animal you would like. Any single one of these animals. It does not have to be the rhinoceros. You might say, you know what? I'm going to take the leopard. I feel like the leopards are going to get us a good amount of points. Now, the next player's turn. They might go ahead and play, let's just say they put a two on the zebra. And then they'll go ahead and get an elephant just because. Now, what does this mean? What do all these numbers mean? Well, at the end of a round, whichever number is face up of an animal, that's how many points they're going to score. So right now, this leopard would be worth zero points because there's nothing out here yet. Rhinoceroses would be worth one point and zebras would be worth two points. But as you progress, you're going to be changing how much they're worth. So the next person might go ahead and put this two lion right here and they might acquire, who, who cares? So it might acquire that. And the next player might go ahead and put this four rhinoceros right here, which means that rhinoceroses are now going to be worth four points. However, it's very unlikely that they'll stay at four points because as we mentioned, there are a grand total of six cards in each suit. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. So what you're trying to do is you are trying to acquire the animals that are going to give you the most points at the end of a round. So for instance, if you had both the zero and the five and the four of a leopard, leopards definitely might be something you want to do. So right now I have a one, two, three of leopards, which means I, have, I don't have too much control over the leopards. On the flip side, I have a two and a five of rhinoceros, and I've already seen the one and four. That might mean that I definitely want to see rhinoceroses out here, because as soon as that zero comes out, I can pretty much guarantee that it's going to be a five pointer at the end of the round. But anywho, you're going to continue going, laying down cards like such, collecting animals like so, until all six cards of a suit are played. So once you have the zero, one, two, three, four, five of a suit all out there and played, then the round will be over. You'll stack up the cards like this, and then you're going to tally up how many points you have, and it's pretty self-explanatory. If you have three leopards, then you're going to gain 15 points. If you have two elephants, you're going to gain eight more points. You'd be up to 23 points. No rhinoceroses, maybe you have one zebra, so you'd be at 25 points and two lions. So this round, you might be at 31 points. And then you are going to rinse, wash, and repeat that with a new player going first. And you're going to go as many rounds as you have people in the game or until you decide to stop, whichever. And that, in a nutshell, is how Wildlife Safari is played. Alrighty then, Wildlife Safari from Eagle Griffin Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, this is a very, very simple game. How simple? I play this with my three-year-old, we team up together, and he understands the general concept. Like, that's how simple it is. It says age is seven plus, I'd easily say you could probably do it with five or six-year-olds, no problem at all. My son does enjoy this game, though, but you need to go into it knowing it's an incredibly simplistic game, and not much is going to change from game to game to game. Also, another con with this game is that this is one of those games where you're just going to do the exact same thing over and over and over and over again, and then when you're done with that, you're going to play another round, and it's going to be the exact same thing over and over again. If you have three players, then you're going to play another round. If you have four players, you're going to play another round. Nothing really is going to change from game to game, aside from the fact that um, each game you'll have different cards in the kitty, which can make things interesting, but still very simple game.
Uh, another con that I have this game, it's a Reiner Nitzi game, which means theme takes a backseat to mechanisms. You'll definitely feel that. You won't really feel like you're wrangling up animals or going on a wildlife safari or anything like that. But they try their best to implement the theme with these plastic mini uh, toys, pretty much, right here. Any other cons I have with this game? You know, at five players, it stretches too long. Uh, I, honestly, at four players, it stretches too long, I think. I would not recommend playing this game for four or five rounds, it's just so somebody has the option to go first. Because I don't feel like it's a huge disadvantage going first, because the round there's a real ebb and flow to this game. But needless to say, I would not recommend going past three rounds of this. Uh, you know, Not to say I dislike it as a five-player game, but I feel like you need to house rule it down from five rounds to three rounds. But regardless of that, Wildlife Safari is a good game. I enjoy it. This one is going to go on my shelf uh, pretty much immediately. And this is going to be a solid family game that I plan on getting out on a routine basis, especially as my kids get older. So what do I like about the game? First and foremost, easy to learn, easy to teach. Look at this rule sheet. Look at that rule sheet. That's it. That's like a promotional thing. I've seen promotional thing in games bigger than that. So you will have this game up and running and ready to rock and roll easily i'd say under five minutes and that's with you reading the rules and everything like that so that is always a good thing also these little plastic toys are going to keep children interested in the game which is great and also they're fun to play with and mess around with and, and they're just cool they really add to the game not to the theme of the game necessarily but they add to the game and i do like that it also makes keeping score uh, a little bit easier especially if you're playing you know, two players. The way we do it with two players is, oh, you have two lions, I have two lions, let's just throw those in the middle. You have a zebra, I have a zebra, throw it in the middle, count everything else. So I do like that. Oh, one last comment I have, I got to mention, there's no way to keep score included with the game, so you have to have a pen and paper, but who cares? You should have a pen and paper, I would assume. Um, what else do I like about the game? You know, it's strategic enough that I feel like as a light filler game on game night, you can also bust it out. So this is definitely what I'd call a chameleon game, family game, yes. Gateway game, yes. Nothing here is going to be scaring away any new people. You could easily play this with seven-year-old grandma, have no problems at all. She could team up with five-year-old Timmy. Grandma and Timmy, you know, they could play this. No big deal. So gateway game, chameleon game, game night filler game. Yes, even though it's on the lighter side. Overall, Wildlife Safari, you know, Reiner Nitzia. I really, I don't know if I've reviewed a bad Reiner Nitzia game. Maybe once here or there I have, but that's in like 20 reviews. He just makes solid games, and this is yet another solid game. And I really do like the components. I feel like the added animals really bump up the quality of this game. So overall, Wildlife Safari from Eagle Griffin Games, if you're in the market for a family game, absolutely don't hesitate. If you're in the market for a lightweight filler game, yes, but I don't know if I'd buy this exclusively for that. If you're looking for a gateway game, yes. Overall, Wildlife Safari, if you get it on your shelf, you're probably going to find a place here or there to play it because it is a good deal of fun. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below. Let me know if you were going on a wildlife safari, what animal would you most like to eat? And let's keep this to realistic animals that you could probably hunt and eat. And I know some people are very anti-hunting and eating wildlife safari. And yeah, I can't say I blame you. But for me personally, um, hmm... It's really a question of do you want something that you think would actually taste good or do you want something that you can like just take a picture of and say, yeah, I ate one of these. Hey, personally, I think you can find a medium spot. I'd say a lion. I'd like to eat a lion. So you can say, yeah, I ate a lion. And also at the same time, it probably doesn't taste too terrible. So wildlife, or so a lion is what I'd eat if I was on a wildlife safari and got to eat one thing. What would you eat? And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.